Oh, Celestial Tor doesn't work on the form? No, it doesn't work. I nope. Think it's what? That's fine. That's a Metro Antor. 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 Hey what's going on guys, my name is CarQ and today's video will be my personal take on running both Symmetra and Torbjorn. This will be my first discussion type of video and I'm going to try this out with a 5W and 1H style of discussion. Who they are, what they do, why I think they're strong, where and when to use them, and how to execute this combo effectively. So let's get started. Who they are is easy, the video topic is on Symmetra and Torbjorn. And what they do is bring a unique type of utility to the team. Armor from Torb and shields or a teleporter from Symmetra, plus a mobile barrier that can block Reinhardt's Earth Shatter and D.Va's Explosion. Now for the question you likely want answered or why you click this video, why should you pick Symmetra and Torbjorn? What could possibly justify them in this tank heavy meta we have thus far in Season 3? In my opinion, there are four reasons why the two of them have seen a resurgence as of late. The first reason is Symmetra's sentries and Torb's turrets are additional variables that enemies have to look out for and will likely want to destroy or avoid line of sight of to prevent chip or poke damage. This often causes teams to completely avoid certain paths. For example, Torb turret and sentry setup on the left side of Temple of Anubis will likely deter the attacking team from trying to break the line of defense from this angle, narrowing their options. Moreover, if they take time to focus these variables, it often creates opportunities for your team to capitalize and press on the open wounds left by those sentries or turret because their damage is seriously nothing to scoff at. They hurt if you don't deal with them. Reason number two, they are both very powerful on defensive sides of maps. Both heroes can get a huge head start on building their ultimates by placing sentries out as Symmetra or building a deep turret as Torbjorn with zero downsides as enemies earn no ultimate charge by destroying them. This may give an average of 10 to even 100% ulti charge on Symmetra if you can land some charge attacks as well, and maybe 10 to 20% on Torbjorn give or take. Number three, they both innately have some serious damage output, so do not underestimate them. Here's Symmetra's damage output from her Photon Projector. She deals four hits per second, with damage ramping up every second up until three seconds. So that's 7.5 damage for the first second, times four hits, which equals 30 DPS, followed by 15 damage times four hits, which is 60 DPS, then 30 damage times four hits, which is equal to 120 DPS. You're dead in under two seconds as a 200 HP hero if Symmetra catches you at full charge. The best part? It's an auto lock-on, so you don't really have to be precise with the aiming, and it requires 7 meters to latch onto an enemy, but 10 meters of distance to disengage now. If Symmetra catches you in this, you are not escaping if you don't have a Zarya bubble, some sort of movement ability, or some sort of CC to stop her, or else she'll just run at the same speed as you. Now look at Winston's as a comparison. His Tesla cannon only reaches 8 meters to engage or disengage and deals 60 DPS, which is half of Symmetra's. Granted, his Tesla cannon can hit multiple enemies and doesn't require a 1 second ramp up to reach this damage. Now taking a look at Torbjorn, he's also very strong on his own, without his turret or his ultimate. His left click has no damage drop off and deals 70 damage to the body and 140 to the head. Sound familiar? The name's McCree. This is the exact same amount as McCree, minus the fact that Torb's shot is a projectile and has a slightly slower rate of fire. Torb also has a built-in shotgun that can deal 150 damage if all pellets connect to the body, allowing him to adapt to situations where enemies walk up a little too close to him. But putting that all aside, I think the most important reason on why Symmetra and Torbjorn are so strong right now is because they provide the defense of the Roadhogs, or as I like to call it, Doter. No one has ever done that in the history of Dota! The 75 armor and 75 shields provided by yours truly guarantees you won't be one shot, even as a squishy character by the bacon loving piggy. The Torb armor serves as good protection until your Symmetra can build her ultimate and put down that shield generator. So, with Symmetra and Torb turning squishy heroes into durable heroes and tanks into super tanks, utility in their turret and sentries, and strong innate damage from their kits, it's no wonder why they've been surprisingly strong if unprepared for. Just ask how NRG felt after Cloud9 pulled it out during MLG Las Vegas. Great defensive hold as it is Cloud9 with a full hold here on Hollywood. Yeah, and they use that Symmetra and Torbjorn to perfection there. Now on to the where. Where would you want to play Symmetra and Torb? I recommend the following maps. For the two CP maps, Hanamura, Volskaya Industries, and Temple of Anubis. For the hybrid maps, Hollywood, Numbani, Kings Row, and Eichenwald. And payload maps, Dorado, Route 66, and Watchpoint Gibraltar. When to pull them out? Obviously the defensive sides of these maps because of the ultimate advantage given with the initial sentry and turret setup. For the two CP maps, Symmetra and Torb work for defending both points, with Torb being slightly weaker on point B. 
For hybrid maps, they can be played defending point A, however they're still pretty decent defending the rest of the map while the payload moves. And for the payload exclusive maps, I would say just play it up until the first checkpoint. If the attacking team makes it to the checkpoint, I would suggest switching off of them because the map opens up a lot more and it's harder to be effective. And for the final part, how to execute this strategy. There's many variations on how to set up and time your abilities effectively on Symmetra and Torb. Here is one quick sentry slash turret location setup for Symmetra and Torb on Hollywood to get you started. I'm only going to show you this one map because showing all of them would make this video too long for my liking. I can separate them as one full Symmetra guide and one full Torbjorn guide in the future on how sentries and turrets should be set up on all maps in the future if you're interested. So, on Hollywood for Symmetra, I like to put my sentries in hard to see places like here, up top here, maybe another one up here. Then I come up to where they come out of from their spawn and throw three up here. And I run all the way back into this corner and get ready to charge my right click. Then at roughly 7.5 seconds before the match starts, that's when you charge your right click to the max and let it go. Then follow it up with a couple more right clicks and hopefully you land a few of them to earn some easy ulti charge. In terms of shield generator placement, I would say put it right here because it makes it really easy to protect once you hear the enemies going for it. You can place it a lot farther in a safer spot, however once the enemy gets to it, it'll be hard to have you and a teammate go back and defend it. For Torbjorn, I like to put my turret in two different places. The first spot in this room is great because it covers the entire point A and forces enemies to deal with it or else they're going to take a little bit too much damage. The second turret spot I like is a little sneaky. Place the turret on these stairs and it makes it really hard for the enemy to see it because of these plants. The turret should be able to cover the entire point, however it's a bit easy for the enemy to take it out once they know where it is. And that's it! Thank you guys for watching, let me know what you guys think of the 5w1h style of discussion video, and I'll see you next time.